Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. In this video, we are going to discuss company branding in Azure AD. First, I wanna talk about why company branding is important. As you move more and more resources to the cloud, you want to have a unique user experience for cloud authentication. You want them to be able to visually associate the brand with your company and that it's the proper login page that they should be seeing when they access cloud resources. Your users are gonna have several dozen portals that they need to log into and those are all gonna have their own unique credentials for the most part, unless they're federated. And so as we progress through this uh, series, we'll be establishing how to migrate the authentication of those legacy apps to the new modern Azure AD authentication portal. The first thing that users will see though is how the portal looks. With phishing and everything else going on these days, you want the branding to be unique enough to make it as easy as possible for them to identify the proper way to use their credentials. Now, I'm not gonna be going into licensing too deep um, in this series, but it is important to note that this feature is only available in the Azure AD 365 P1 or P2 licenses. And as we go through these videos, we'll be using all of the security features associated with P2 or E5. Um, and I will assume that you're using this license level. And if you're not, some of the features that you see may be a little bit different. Now to get to the company branding setting, you're gonna go to entra.microsoft.com and you're gonna log in. You're gonna select Azure Active Directory and expand the user experience menu and select company branding. Once you are in the branding portal for the first time, you'll see that there is no branding profile selected. So click configure to create the first one. So we're gonna take a pause here and we're gonna go over some of the finer details of the requirements. Uh, you have seven settings here to review and you know they have their own little quirks. So background images, uh, this will be the background, the backdrop to the login screen. The login section will be centered on top of the page, so you don't really wanna select a picture where the focus is in the middle um, as it's gonna get covered up by the login prompt. The max file size is 1920 by 1080 uh, or standard HD, but what you're really gonna have a problem with is getting that in 300 kilobytes. The max file size is 300 KB. So you're gonna to have to use an image tool to reduce the quality of the picture if you wanna use full HD resolution. Um, I chose to use a full HD image for this purpose and I reduced the image quality myself. The banner logo is going to be inside of the login box above the username. This is where your company logo is gonna be. Now this must be formatted in a banner format so that it doesn't look funny, i.e. crop the top and the bottom of your logo but leave empty space on the side so that it'll look right so it's proportionate. Uh, the max resolution is 280 by 60 pixels. Um, so use an imaging tool to scale it down. Most of the ones that I've used, when I scale it down to 280 by uh, 60, it actually fits in the max size of 10 kilobytes. Um, but it should be, you know, it should be fine for most logos. If you do run into the issue, just reduce the quality of the image. Now the login hint isn't necessary in most cases that I've seen, but in some cases, providing a hint for the user may be desired. Um, on the sign-in page text, it's a custom message that you can publish to the sign-in page. Now, this is great for links to corporate compliance policies, legal disclaimers, etc. It does have a uh, 1,024 character limit, though, so be mindful of that. Um, the sign-in page background color is going to be what is used in a scenario where the background image won't load, like if you have bandwidth constraints or such. Uh, the square logos for light and dark mode will be used in different spots throughout the portal. Uh, so just set those up and, you know, you can disable remembering the sign-in, but I really wouldn't recommend that. All right, so after you've completed this, you want to save your changes. And the next time that you log into a Microsoft resource, you will be presented with your logon screen after Realm Discovery. Um, and if you're not familiar with Realm Discovery, that's, you know, for this particular series, I'm using at Connolly.Ventures. Um, it's essentially the suffix of your email. So whenever you type in your username, Microsoft's gonna say, oh, hey, I need to go to Connolly Ventures branding page. And it's gonna redirect you to that to put your password in. Um, and you know, that's how you configure company branding to give end users a visually distinct login experience. Uh, 